revenue up to 4.1 billion versus 4 billion, 2.7 percent up. Profit from continuous operation, almost on an EBITDA. The cash flow coming through there at 1.3 billion, um, quite healthy, 4.5 percent up there. A big focus on there. And then obviously you will see depreciation to revenue, still 22.5% to revenue, and over 23% if you compare it to your assets, still very conservative and writing these assets down uh, to the levels which, which, that it should be. And that gives us an operating profit of 436 million versus the 407 in the, in the prior year. If I look at it from a, from a, a headline earnings and an earnings point of view, our uh, average shares and an issue that we divided that by, excluding our treasuries, is 391 million. And that gives us a continuous headline earnings of 22.2 cents versus 18.8 .8 in the prior year. We've taken a 763 million in payment. That is on all the excess equipment that we've previously reported on. Uh, and we've written that down to, to values that we believe we can liquidate into cash uh, quite easily, as well as some of the plant rental equipment, uh, as well as ex uh, or assets that we had working on mine that came to the end of life. And we're not going to invest any more money on those. That made up that figure. I think we also need to finalize the Benga. What is important there is that we've decided, you know, although it was a dollar-based contract, again, it was in Mozambique. Uh, we were not so sure about the, the outlook and the economic outlook in, in that territory, so we wanted to reduce our exposure in there. Uh, the loss that you will see there that's lying in discontinued operation is 572 million for Benga. Obviously, 440 million is the impairment charge that we've taken to get it to the 50 million uh, selling price, 50 million US selling price, as well as the tax that we've provided for, 147 million of tax that we've provided for uh, as we need to repatriate those funds and in the recruitment of those assets. We've also closed down a lot of the non-core businesses and we're going to get out of those non-core assets that we evolved in all the di different divisions over, over the last couple of years. Uh, specifically uh, in the industrial equipment division where we've exited the Terex distributorship. We just believe it is way too volatile uh, and we're not going to invest any more money in there and it was exposure to mining. We've also closed the heavy lift business in there. In total, we've taken a 69 million loss there after the provisions for retrenchments and closing that down, as well as a 43 million uh, loss in the commodity space. Again, that commodity logistics business was exposure to, to the mining industry. Um, and we've decided that we're not going to invest more money in that space as well. This was actually back to basics, focusing on the core. Um, to us, it was all about almost turning every asset on it there, it, making sure that we, we look at the quality of our earnings going forward. To us, that's a big focus uh, to build a, a robust business model. And that's why you'll see that we've exited a lot of the non-core operations in every single division. We've even sold some properties that we believe is non-core to, to improve our liquidity position. And I think the challenge is going forward is, is for us is our liquidity profile and the focus on that to make sure that we give ourselves tenor and term in there and to open uh, the ability for the rest of the group to start growing again. Mm -hmm.